Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to winterize the 2023 Winnebago Solus 59PX. Yep, it's that time of year. But before we get started, please don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any informative content. All right, let's get started. So before we actually go through step by step, um, I definitely want to talk about a few of the pre-winterization steps. Um, that way when we do actually winterize, there's, there's, no, um, there's no water in the tank. So that's, that's uh, our first couple of steps is to make sure that your fresh water tank is empty make sure your gray tanks is empty um, and then what I typically like to do is I like to um, empty the Truma water heater so I'll show you what that looks like so it might be hard to see but um, the first thing you want to do is just kind of a safety feature is you kind of want to make sure your LP is turned off you also also want to make sure that your Truma system is turned off so there's a little switch here just make sure that that's switched to off and then there's um, there's a fresh water low point drain and then there's a couple of truma drains in there as well but three in total so what i do is i just empty the water um one from your fresh water tank to make sure it's completely empty and then i'll also empty any water that's left over in the uh, water heater so once i've emptied the low point drains for the Truma system and once I've completely emptied the fresh water tank and my gray tank I think it's safe to assume that we can begin the winterization process so let's go ahead and get started all right so what we're gonna need is uh, two gallons of RV antifreeze make sure it's the pink rv antifreeze because car antifreeze is toxic and dangerous and you definitely don't want to put that through your system okay so we have our two gallons of rv antifreeze we're also going to need our quick connect hose which will uh, run through towards the end of the video um, but the first thing we want to do is we want to set our Nautilus system to winterize. And again, I apologize for the shadows, but um, your winterize setting is right here. So I've already gone ahead and, and set the Nautilus system to winterize. Um, and what this is gonna do is this is gonna bypass your Truma water heater. Um, we don't want any water flowing or any RV antifreeze flowing through the Truma system. Um, so when you set your Nautilus plumbing system to winterize, um, the way it's designed is it will pressurize the system with RV antifreeze, but it will also bypass the Truma water heater so you don't get any RV antifreeze inside of the Truma water heater system. All right, um, so let's go ahead and turn the water pump on to begin pressurizing our system with the RV antifreeze. So here's the pump. Let's go ahead and turn that on and you'll hear it start to All right, so you can see it drinking that RV antifreeze rather quickly. So we'll let that 
go. Perfect. Okay, so now, now that the RV system, or the RV antifreeze has gone through the system, it's pressurized. So now we can go um, and pump that RV antifreeze through each of our water lines, uh, specifically our water outlets. So that'll be the shower, that'll be the sink faucet, and then as I mentioned earlier, that'll be um, with the Quick Connect. We have a Quick Connect um, outdoor shower here, and then we have a Quick Connect outdoor shower in the front. So we'll just hit those two areas towards the end. Okay, so let's go ahead and start high to low. So let's start with the shower first. Okay. So let's go ahead and un unlock the bathroom there. Let's move this out of the way. Over here. All right, so let's get this shower here. And we're just going to, let me turn on the shower. I'm just gonna empty it so that it drains in the toilet. And then towards the end, if we have any leftover, which we should, we can pour that leftover into the shower, um, into the shower drain down below there. But for now, we'll just turn on the cold water. And we'll let that run until we see pink. Okay, there's the pink. So we did that for the cold. Now let's do that for the hot. Let that run for a few seconds. I think that. I think that's sufficient. Okay. Uh, that's good. So we done the cold and the pink. And then let me empty this real quick. And then we'll also flush the toilet. And we see we have pink there. So that's good. All right. All right, so the bathroom is done. So let's go ahead and move over to the kitchen faucet. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. We'll start with the cold. We'll just run that until we see pink. Okay. And then we'll do the hot. We'll run that until we see pink. Okay. Nice steady flow there. Okay. It looks like my first bottle is just about empty. So we'll go ahead and change this out. That's why you need two gallons, I guess. Always works out pretty good. We can just slide that over. Okay, all right, so now we're gonna do the quick connect. And we'll just connect that there. And basically I just wanna turn on my, okay, turn on the, uh, and then let that come out until we see pink. Okay, that looks good. And then we'll do it, sorry for the shakiness there. We'll turn that off, turn the hot water side on as well. And we'll run that through until we see pink. Okay, that should be good. Let's go ahead and turn this off. 
and let me bleed the pressure. Perfect. Let's go ahead and take this out. Okay, excuse me for one second. See if I can do it with two hands. Give me one second here, folks. There we go. Had to use two hands. Okay. So we can now do the front. Make sure this line is winterized as well. Okay. Make sure it's plugged in correctly. There we go. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and turn this on. Let it go till it turns pink. Okay, that looks pretty good. Turn that off. And we'll turn the hot water on. Let that go until it turns pink. There we go. Perfect. Let's turn that off. Okay. So course you got to use the two hands so let's bleed the line first okay perfect and set that down so I can use two hands perfect okay and it's good to have a towel to wipe up some of the pink. I've heard from a few folks that sometimes that pink will will stain certain areas. So um, you do have a towel here. You can obviously use paper towels if you wish. Either one works fine. Um, so now what I usually do is we're going to go ahead and take the leftover Make sure it's out of there. You'll probably have some pouring out there. We can wipe it up, no problem. But what I like to do is probably drain half of this into here and then definitely drain the rest in the shower drain. Just pour it down in the drain there. Make sure those lines are good. Okay. All right. So the next thing I like to do as well is, so we know that, we know that when we, set our Nautilus system to winterize. It's pressurizing the entire system. It bypasses the Truma water heater. Um, but what I like to do just as a safety precaution, again, is I like to make sure that these drains are in fact empty. So if for some strange reason, some water got into the Truma water heater system, we can we can just um, empty those right now. So there are there are three low point drains here, and again I've already shut off the system. So there's three low point drains. So we're just going to turn that off. And we're gonna 
turn that off. And we're going to turn that off. Okay. All right, folks, I think that is all of the steps that we need to winterize. So let's just kind of go through. I kind of made a little checklist here. Let's go through each of the steps so we know um, just step by step all of the um, steps that we went through to winterize each and each process. So number one is definitely make sure to empty the fresh water tank. Um, definitely make sure that you empty the fresh water tank low point drain, which is located um, back where the Truma system's at. Um, empty the gray tank, set your Nautilus system to winterize, uh, turn on your pump to pressurize the system uh, so that the system can begin drinking uh, the RV antifreeze. And then we just want to kind of start from high, high to low through the system, uh, through the coach. Start with the shower, hot, cold. Uh, make sure you get RV antifreeze running through those lines. Uh, go to your kitchen sink faucet. Do hot and cold. Uh, make sure lines are going, uh, I'm sorry, antifreeze is going th through the faucet um, on the hot, cold side. Then you want to do both of your quick connects. Um, and then, yeah, pour any leftover antifreeze into the kitchen sink drain and then also the sour, uh, shower drain. Now, um, if I miss, miss anything, please feel free to leave it in the comments below. Pretty sure I covered all the areas. Now, what I like to do is leave the system pressurized in winterized mode. Um, so whether you're out dry camping or camping in the winter or camping in, you know, freezing temperatures, you you don't want to change it to dry camping. Uh, you you want to definitely leave it leave it in the winterized setting. Um, what you will do probably is turn on the Truma furnace, um, and that is a separate mechanism. So you're not really turning on the water heater. You definitely don't want to turn on the water heater because um, you're going to boil that antifreeze. Um, but you, you definitely can still utilize your, your furnace in the winter. But just make sure that your coach is left in the winter ice setting. Make sure it's pressurized. Um, and you shouldn't have any problems. Again, if I miss anything or if you have any suggestions, helpful tips, please feel free to leave it in the comments below. And I think that about covers it, folks. So thanks again for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more informative com content. And we'll see you next time on The Healthy Traveler. Thanks again for watching.